Good morning. The announcements for this Sunday, April 7th, are these. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Please join us at 3 o'clock today in the church for exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, and for confessions. Today at 1 o'clock, the Columbiettes will be hosting an Easter egg hunt, and there's no need to register. Please just come to the school field with your children. This evening, all 7th to 12th grade students are invited to a combined United Youth Group and Encounter Youth Group evening in the Gathering Hall from 6.30 to 8.30. On Monday, April 8th, please join us for a special Mass at noon to celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation. Please return the baby bottles if you still have them. To date, we have collected over $5,000 to be shared with agencies that help pregnant mothers. If you are an adult who has not received confirmation and would like to receive the sacrament, we will be having classes to prepare you for the sacrament of confirmation in this month of April. For more information and to register for any of the events mentioned above, please see the website or the bulletin. Welcome to all of our St. Rose parishioners and to any visitors who are with us to gather together today for the celebration of the liturgy for the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday of Divine Mercy. This Mass is being offered for Agnello de Meglio and Richard and Sheila Shanahan. Thank you for your generosity to the parish. The first collection today is our regular offertory collection, and the second collection is the special monthly collection. The celebrant for today is Father Peter. If you would please join in the entrance hymn in, in your missalettes, Alleluia, Alleluia. It's number 175. Please stand.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And my very dear sisters and brothers, our dear Lord never tires of blessing us. He wants nothing more than for us to continue to be filled with blessing after blessing. And so not only do we continue to celebrate the great season of Easter, today we get to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Not just one day, but every day. And so to prepare ourselves to enter into these holy, these most sacred Easter mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, 
Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Author Stephen Covey is known for writing his very popular book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. 
It's a catchy name, and many other authors have kind of um, gone off of that. I have a book called The Seven Secrets of uh, Successful Catholics, and there's a seven of this and a seven of that. But Covey's book was a self-improvement book uh, with a business person orientation, and it was published in 1989, about 35 years ago. And habit number two is to start with the end in mind. In a nutshell, that entails discerning who you are now and who you want to be at some certain point in the future, or where you are now in your career or your business and where you hope to be. And then you make a plan and you get there and you follow the plan and all the details that you yourself architect. And then hopefully you get to where you're going and I'm sure you adjust along the way. I recall that one of the exercises was to write your own obituary, which helps to clarify what you want to be remembered for. What do you want people to be saying about you when your life's work is done? So let's start this morning with the end in mind through the eyes of St. John, Jesus' best friend, the one who Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to from the cross. Behold your mother. Now, I'm pretty sure that St. John never read any Stephen Covey, but inspired by the Holy Spirit, here's how he characterized what he wanted the effect of his gospel to be on us. He writes at the end of the passage that I just proclaimed to you that all of what he wrote in the gospel was written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. And commentators would say that by come to believe, he means come to believe for the first time or deepen your current belief in God all about our belief in God. Belief is faith. St. John's first letter goes on to say that obedience to God's commandments shows our love of God and of Jesus and that our faith in Jesus conquers the world. The reading said we're victors over the world and that means that Jesus' death for sin brings us eternal life as the victors over the world. So what is the end in mind that St. John says we should begin with? Eternal life. Eternal life is the end we should have in mind. And this whole scene that John records of Jesus' appearance to the 11 disciples in the upper room, including his return to address Thomas's unbelief, is all about St. John being sure he's done all the Holy Spirit has directed him to do so that we may believe in Jesus the way he did and the way all of the apostles did, that Jesus is alive, that the cross was a victory, not a defeat. And he even emphasizes this earlier in his gospel in chapter 19, verse 35, where he says, an eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. And knowing full well that we also may have our doubts like Thomas, he gives us this whole ugly story about Thomas's fervent unbelief that he expressed to his brother disciples, which according to some linguists was closer to a much harsher tone than the translation comes over in the gospel, more like something that says, I will never believe unless I thrust my finger into the nail marks and shove my hand into his side. A real fervent unbelief. And he includes, St. John does, the whole soaring story of Thomas's dramatic conversion at this astounding sight of Jesus' standing before him, resurrected, standing before him alive, and standing before him bearing the wounds of the crucifixion for Thomas's examination. And finally, St. John records Thomas's confession of Christ, a confessional cry that echoes down through the ages, that pierces our hearts. My Lord and my God. See how Jesus brings his divine mercy to his disciples in the upper room. 
They become recipients of divine mercy at Jesus' simple greeting, peace be with you. There they sit, cowering in fear for their lives, mourning and weeping and regretting the loss of their leader, who in their minds was the one who was going to restore Israel to its glory. They're wallowing in their failure to achieve their anticipated greatness. Remember, they were speaking uh, among each other at some point, who's the greatest among us? Who's the greatest among us? They're thinking it's going to be great. They're wallowing in the shame of their abandonment of Jesus in their cowardice in his greatest time of need. And Peter has this personal betrayal to occupy his time, his three denials of Jesus in his leaders and his friends' hour of need. All of them, all of the apostles, so human in their reactions and emotions after their leader's brutal crucifixion, so like us. But they hear no rebuke from Jesus. They only hear, peace be with you. And you can imagine they've heard that voice before. They've heard that tone. They know when Jesus is loving on them. They've spent three years with him. By now, they know all his ups and downs, all his emotions, the way he communicates to them in a most personal way. Peace be with you. And after receiving divine mercy, they become agents of divine mercy as Jesus breathes on them, invests them in the Holy Spirit, and others will be reconciled with God because of that, because they can forgive sins. Catholic writer Robert Allard points out that the divine mercy image, which we have in the sanctuary this morning, portrays Christ coming to us from heaven, coming through that curtain between heaven and earth that opens up during every liturgy. And Jesus is bestowing on us his inexhaustible grace and mercy. And the two rays represent blood and water. And the red ray is the blood denoting the Eucharist, which is the life of souls, the life we will partake of in just a few minutes. And the white and blue ray denotes the water of baptism that makes souls righteous, as well as the giving of the Holy Spirit, which is present in all sacraments of the church. And in the center, is this icon, the Paschal Mystery. Christ is presented as the crucified, risen Lord, the one who reigns now and will come again. So this is an Easter image, easily the image of Christ, that first Easter on the evening of the resurrection, appearing to the disciples in the upper room, in one form or another, metaphorically. Jesus' promise of divine mercy comes through this mystic, St. Faustina, who was commissioned by Jesus to have that divine mercy image created and who wrote in her diary, our Lord Jesus said, the soul that will go to confession and receive holy communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates throughout which graces flow are opened let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the font of mercy. Jesus, the font of mercy, came to the disciples in the upper room. Peace be with you. So when it comes to faith, what end do you have in mind? Is it to have a share in eternal life that Jesus invites us into over and over and over in Scripture? And if it is, then what steps are you taking toward that end? I ask myself the same question. What steps am I taking toward that end, toward our relationship with God? And if you want peace, he is found in the fount of mercy that he's asking us to turn to.
And now together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so with great confidence and great Easter hope, we turn to God, who is our Father, with these our prayers and petitions. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments will work to ensure that all people can live in peace with the freedom to worship God and pursue holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection would move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those trapped in confusion or doubt, that they may be filled with the truth and light of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to face trials of life with confidence and certainty that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died and those who mourn them, we remember in a special way our friend, our parishioner, and our choir manager, Jerry Belanger, husband of Nancy Belanger. And we also pray for Aniello de Meglio and Richard and Sheila Shanahan, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they rest in the eternal peace of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pause in silence to add our own intentions. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, the greatest attribute of your love is your mercy. In receiving this precious gift, May we extend that mercy through our love to the world. We ask these, we make these prayers in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those who have butterflies uh, for the uh, First Communion candidates, uh, please bring them forward. Our offertory hymn is number 524. God of mercy.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands. The praise and glory of his name, our good, to all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but during this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Faustina, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, especially to Aniello D'Amelio and Richard and Sheila Shanahan, for whom we celebrate this Mass. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence, let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Easter peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
action in mind and body, soul and spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, as I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just another reminder today, of course, we have our Divine Mercy Chaplet, no, uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet service uh, at 3 p.m. Tomorrow we celebrate the Solemnity of the Annunciation. That may seem a little strange because the date for the Annunciation, of course, is March 25th. But because that fell during Holy Week, the Church has moved that solemnity, the highest form of celebration, tomorrow. And so we do have the extra Mass at noon, Solemnity of the Annunciation. Again, God continuing to just bestow so much of his continued blessings upon us. Tomorrow is the celebration of the Conception Day of Jesus Christ in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So many excellent things going on. Please, we have our Boy Scouts who uh, are selling coffee in the back as far as donations. And actually, I think uh, I've actually brewed uh, a pot of coffee. So please help yourself uh, as you're leaving. Uh, and of course, uh, Ma March Madness continues uh, through e April, uh, the next couple of days, tomorrow, today, and tomorrow. So we'll obviously see how UConn does. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, let's do a solemn blessing. I missed that one. It's okay. Bow down for the blessing. <laughs> May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gifts of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And once again, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in our closing song, number 177, The Day of Resurrection. 